that New York Times story, um, and I was referring to, it's in the education section, enrollment off in big districts forcing layoffs. Enrollment nearly half of the nation's largest school districts has dropped steadily over the last five years, triggering school closings that have destabilized neighborhoods, caused layoffs of essential staff, and concerns in many cities that the students who remain are some of the neediest and most difficult to educate. Now, who are we talking about here? We're talking about inner cities. They're abandoning the public school system. Those who can are getting out. And there is a ripple effect. Administrators, teachers, so forth, losing their jobs, and the people that remain, according to the New York Times, are the worst of the worst. This is decay. This is decay all around us. People don't want decay. They did not vote for decay. And that's why I, I, I refuse to believe, folks, that we've reached a point where a majority of people are not troubled by any of this. This is stuff that people are living. They don't have to read about this in the New York Times. I got a note from Stanley Kurtz today. Stanley Kurtz has been one of the foremost researchers of Barack Hussein Obama mm -mm -mm, and his radical ties throughout his whole life. And he's got a new book coming out. The title of the book escapes me. I didn't print out this, uh, this note. But I'll, 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 more detail on it in, um, in, in the future. But let me just tell you basically what the premise is. The premise is that Obama and his band of radicals in the government despise suburbia. Blame suburbia and suburbanites for what's happening. Places like Detroit, for example, and other big cities that are in the midst of this decay. It is because people have moved out. And they have moved out to places where they can hang out together and be amongst people like them. Do you see where this is going? And one of the, according to Mr. Kurtz, one of the fundamental aspects of, of uh, dealing with Obama, one of the could be very successful things to do in a campaign against Obama. It's all tied in, by the way, to the Thomas B. Edsall stuff that we pointed out last November, where they've abandoned white working class voters. Obama wants nothing to do with them. He's not camp, And now they're running ads aimed at those people trying to dispirit them and depress them and to tell them that Romney hates them and Romney is not going to to isolate them. Uh, and, and make them think that uh, they've got no representation and nobody's looking out for them and just try to depress them, suppress their vote, dispirit them to the point that they don't show up. The bitter clingers, suburbanites. And this is something, Obama's never going to use this terminology. He's never going to say he's angry at suburbanites. But he's going to say it in such a way that he'll convey that impression to the people who uh, he wants to understand it. And I think that there's something to it. I and they, Look, this I'm just giving you a real sketch. Uh, view. Kurtz has written a whole book about this that comes out. I think it's next week. More on it. I'll print the story out and, and, and uh, fill you in on some of the gaps here. In the meantime, John St. Louis, thanks for waiting. Great to have you on the EIB Network. Hello. Hi, Russ. Nice to finally talk to you. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I love your show. Um, yeah, I got a couple comments and a question at the end. Uh, uh, you know, earlier you were talking about uh, the no meat Mondays and stuff, and I see this creeping more and more into our culture. That you know, you got some of these celebrities, these artists, uh, world-renowned Sir Paul McCartney, which 
by the way, they keep announcing that sir thing. Uh, that's not really uh, American. We don't like titles like that. But anyway, so Paul goes to the White House, and uh, he tells the Obamas that it's nice to have a president that knows what a library is, a slant to uh, about Bush. But anyway, so here you got him. He, he's, he pushes this no meat thing. If you work for him and his band, you can't even eat any meat at all. You have to go out for it. But, you know, it was okay when he ate meat years ago, but then he come, becomes enlightened, and now it's bad. Well, that's the point. I don't care. Paul McCartney can go out and find twigs and berries for all I care. What, 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 what obviously bothers me is McCartney thinking he's seen the light and telling everybody else how they have to eat. That's why I call them militant vegetarians, militant vegans. They're liberals, folks. They're not content to live their lives the way they want to. They have to force everybody else to. Because people that do not represent a threat to them. Whether it's what you eat, or what you believe politically, they, they're not tolerant. They have no tolerance. Zilch. Zero nada. Uh, I just, they just can't leave well enough alone. He has to try to force his way on everybody else, make it a moral thing, which leaves me cold. Back after this.